This video is sponsored by Defective. Get your Dequan merch and eSkate inspired apparel and stickers at Defective.com. Defective, not defective. That's D F F E C T I V E dot com. Nowadays, when I get a request to cover an electric skateboard from a brand that I had never heard of, I ask the requester, what are your product's unique selling points? What are your board's competitive advantages? Most of the time, the requester is unable to answer those questions, and so I don't cover the board. But this time, it's different. Bound motor. Before they reached out to me, I had never heard of them. So I thought, okay, here we go again. Another board with nothing special, except for maybe longer range and a higher top speed. I took a look at their website anyway, and their website was actually pretty nice. And some of their boards use this really good looking drop down deck. Also, they use speed controllers based on VESC. I'll explain what that means later, but that also caught my attention. So I talked to them, and they let me choose which board I wanted to cover. I was actually quite interested in direct drive, but they only had that with double kingpin trucks, which I'm not a big fan of. So I chose the Bound R3, which uses reverse kingpin trucks and hub motors. These days I'm a bit reluctant to cover boards that use hub motors because I really prefer belt drive, but the wheels on this one are kind of different, so I was curious about that as well. Anyway, I've tried the board, and here are my thoughts. Normally I start my reviews by talking about the deck, but this time I'll start with the ESC because it affects how I review this board. The vast majority of boards that you can buy today, especially boards under $2,000, use some variation of the Hobby Wing or Ling Yi ESC. But the Bound R3, and actually every board from Bound Motor, uses an ESC based on VESC. What does that mean exactly? VESC is an open source ESC that any individual or company can use and modify for their own needs. Many high-end and DIY electric skateboards use ESCs based on VESC. Most of the time, when you get a board that uses a VESC based ESC, you can tweak a lot of settings that are normally off limits to customers. It's kind of like how you can customize a bunch of stuff on an Android phone, whereas on an iPhone you can't. It's important to note though that not all VESC based ESCs are the same. As I said, VESC is open source, and companies can do whatever they want with it. I'll talk more about this in other parts of this review. For now, let's move on to the deck. This deck is big. It's 42 inches long and 10 inches wide. There's a lot of room to stand on this deck. So it's good that parts of this deck flare up instead of just curve up at the edges. This allows you to maneuver the board better without having to move your feet a lot on such a wide board. This deck is not flexy, probably because of the enclosure. Some people prefer a flexi deck because it gets less road vibration, but the long wheelbase of this deck diffuses the vibrations quite a bit also. Even though I like drop down decks, this board looks like it doesn't really benefit from the drop down. Look at all those risers. What's the point of a drop down deck if you're just gonna raise the height again with a bunch of risers? The risers are necessary on this board because the enclosure is so close to the ground, but it seems to me they could have instead used a deck that was not drop down. I haven't seen these trucks in a long time. If I remember correctly, they were used on boards like the WoWGo 2 for Real F1 and a bunch of other hub motor budget boards from a couple years ago. But the rear truck is different though. This truck hanger actually has axles, which the motors mount onto. The stock front bushings are 90A and the back are 95A. They work fine for me. I'm lucky that I'm about 69 kilograms, so stock bushings almost always work well for me. And I appreciate that they put harder bushings in the back. I think that works better for most people. Despite this board having a really long deck and generic trucks, I'm totally fine with its maneuverability. I usually prefer using all barrel bushings, but the cone bushings help this board feel a little bit more nimble. For those wondering if you can still turn on a long deck without double kingpin trucks, yes, you can absolutely still turn. Is there a difference in maneuverability? Sure, but not that much. This is just my personal preference, okay? I don't hate double kingpin, not always, but I definitely prefer reverse kingpin. Anyway, I think these trucks are fine. When I was using this board, I actually forgot that I was on hub motors. That's kind of significant because these replaceable hub motor sleeves don't look particularly thick, but they seem to do a great job at dampening vibrations. These are not all-terrain wheels. They're only 105 millimeters in diameter. 
The downside is that these wheels are so soft that they appear to have quite an effect on range. And I'm told from others who have these wheels that they wear out quickly. So just like any other wheels, there are pros and cons. Balan Motors sells this board with two battery options. One is a 12S2P with 426 watt hours, and the other is a 12S3P with 639 watt hours. They use the same battery cells, and the difference is only $100, so I'm not sure why they even offer the cheaper option. Definitely get the 12S3P option. The batteries use Panasonic 21700-4800 mAh cells. The exact model number is unknown, but the discharge rate should be 30 amps. I'm not a battery expert, so correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but those specs look pretty darn good to me. I asked for the model number of the battery cell, but they don't have it. If you happen to know more about these cells, I'd appreciate it if you leave a comment. According to Bound Motors website, the top speed of this board is 50 km per hour. That's faster than I like to ride on an electric skateboard, so I'm not gonna test that out. But manufacturer specs for the top speed is usually accurate, unless you're a much heavier person. The acceleration felt a bit too chill for me though. It's not exactly slow, but I think all of my other boards that came out in the past year have noticeably quicker acceleration. But remember, as I said earlier, this board is using a VESC based ESC. The maximum battery current is set to 20 amps, so if I want, I can go into the VESC tool to increase that to something like 25 amps. I can also make adjustments to the throttle curve. These are just screenshots from Bound Motor. I haven't done any of these things, so I don't actually know how much difference they make. I'll get around to it someday. I'm pretty happy with the default settings for the brakes. If you want, they can also be tuned in the VESC tool. The only minor issue I have with the brakes is that they seem to be very weak when you're almost at a complete stop. At all other speeds, the brakes are adequately strong, but when you're almost at a full stop, it kind of feels like the brakes let go. It's a minor thing because at that speed, you can just put your foot down, but I wonder if that's something that can be changed in the Vest Tool app. Either way, it's not a deal breaker for me. This remote looks and feels very similar to the standard Hobby Wing remote. It has a power button, a speed mode button, and four lights for the battery indicator. The control wheel feels pretty much the same as the Hobby Wing. The only major difference is that this remote doesn't have a reverse switch. To go into reverse, you tap the power button twice. According to their website, this board weighs 8.9 kilograms, but according to my scale, it weighs 10.2 kilograms. I think my number is more accurate. Just for context, most small and medium sized electric skateboards are around 7 to 9 kilograms, and most all terrain boards are around 10 kilograms and up. So the weight of this board is kind of like a lightweight all terrain board. Like other long and heavy boards, you'll generally carry this board by pulling the front truck while the rear wheels are on the ground. I think the deck looks really nice. I like the dark wood color and how it's not all covered by the grip tape. I think the logo is placed really nicely as well. It's not like a big giant advertisement. I like that this enclosure seems to have been made specifically for this deck. From a distance, I think the board overall looks really nice, but up close, things start to look kind of cheap. I weigh 69 kilograms, or a little over 70 with everything I was carrying. The weather was 25 degrees Celsius. I got about 26 kilometers on this board. I stopped measuring at about 23, and then I was still able to ride for about another 3 kilometers at a lower speed. As I said, Bound Motor offers two different batteries for this board. One is 426 watt hours and the other is 639 watt hours. I'm guessing they sent me the smaller battery. Even so, the efficiency seemed really low for my weight. 26 kilometers with a 426 watt hour battery comes out to about 16 watt hours used per kilometer. That's like an all terrain board, even though the wheels are just 105 millimeters. But like I said earlier, these wheels are really soft. According to my durometer tool, they're about 70A. Just for comparison, my blue keyboards are about 77A as expected, and the cloud wheels are about 80A. So at 70A, these wheels are softer by far than anything else I have around this size. I knew they were going to impact the range, but I wasn't expecting this much. But do also keep in mind that I've only done the range test one time. A lot of things can affect range, so if I do it again, I could get a very different number. Again, that's with the smaller battery. If I were using the bigger battery with the same efficiency, I would get 39 kilometers. 
for people who live in places with bad roads but won't go off-roading, I think this is a good alternative to an all-terrain board. I'm not personally a fan of big all-terrain wheels. I think they're fine for off-roading, but for street use, I definitely prefer smaller wheels. These wheels surprised me. Like I said, while I was riding, I totally forgot I was on hub motors. The super soft wheels combined with the large deck makes this board a really comfortable ride. I love the way the deck looks, but I wish everything else about the board looked equally good. If you're interested in this board, check out the video description on how to get the best deal.